Hi, uh, my name is Haider Eid, and I'm an associate professor of cultural studies in uh, besieged Gaza occupied Palestine. Uh, I'm recording this message in support of the great efforts, courageous efforts, made by uh, the organizers of uh, the Freedom Flotilla. Um, I'm, coincidentally, I'm recording this um, message on the 27th. Of, uh, of of December 2020, um, which is um, the day when the Israeli occupation forces um, decided to attack the Gaza Strip back in 2009, launch a massive a massive war on the civilians of Gaza, which lasted for um, uh, for 22 days. Um, leaving more than 1,200 civilians dead and uh, thousands of people injured. Um, and as if that was not enough, um, the Israeli occupation forces of apartheid Israel, of course, decided to do the same thing in, um, um, in 2012, um, leaving um, about 200 people dead and then again in 2014, leaving more than 2,200 people dead and more than 15,000 injured. All these massive attacks come within a deadly medieval siege that has been imposed on Gaza um, since, um, since 2007. In fact, some people dated back to January 2006, when we were asked to go to the polling station and vote for our representatives in the Legislative Council, representatives of the Palestinians of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank only, not all uh, the Palestinian people. Uh, not those who live as second-class citizens in um, in Israel, and not more than seven thousand, seven sorry, million um, refugees living in the diaspora, and in miserable refugee camps. Now, um, the reason I am um, recording this message in support of the Freedom Flotilla because um, we need this kind of initiatives. To, um, to bring this um, inhumane siege to an end. Israel, when Israel decided, first when Israel was established in 1948, the international community um, you know, issued resolutions upon resolutions, including United Nations Resolution 194, which asks um, you know, uh, for the return of Palestinian refugees to the towns and villages from which they were ethnically cleansed and compensating them, of course. Israel did not do that. And um, has, since 1948, has not allowed a single Palestinian refugee, including my parents who come from the ethnically cleansed village of Zernoga. Um, my parents died in 2005 dreaming of the day when they would be allowed to return uh, to uh, to the village of Zernuga. They were never allowed to do that. And unfortunately, they died in the Nusayrat refugee camp. But I'm saying this because it is important for people never to forget that two thirds um, about 80% of the residents of Gaza are refugees entitled to their right of return in accordance with the United Nations Resolution 194. But, and I think, honestly, I think uh, when people keep asking me, why is Israel besieging Gaza? Why is Israel committing war crimes and crimes against humanity according to mainstream human rights organizations from Amnesty International to Human Rights Watch, including B'Tselem, which is an Israeli human rights organization. Israel has turned the Gaza Strip into the largest um, open air prison um, on, on earth. Actually, Israel has decided to turn the Gaza Strip into, and I'm sorry, into a concentration camp. 
Um, what Israel has been doing to us in the Gaza Strip is, according to uh, the conscientious and courageous Israeli activist, Elan Pape, um, what Israel has been doing to us in Gaza amounts to an incremental genocide. Now, in spite of all these things, and in spite of the spread of the coronavirus with the, um, after the collapse, of course, of the health system, we have no electricity, we have no water, we have no medicine, etc., etc. In spite of all of that, the international community um, has decided to do absolutely nothing. And this is why it is left for people of conscience, the same people of conscience who did not step aside and... Uh, when, when, when the apartheid system of South Africa, uh, you know, killed uh, hundreds and thousands of black Africans, uh, the, inter the international civil society, conscientious people, decided to intervene and boycott apart the apartheid system, impose sanctions against it, and divest from it until it crumbled until Nelson Mandela was released in 1990, and until the apartheid system crumbled in 1994. And this is exactly what we are expecting people of conscience to do. We want the international community to boycott apartheid Israel until it complies with international law. But more than that, Gaza has been under this medieval siege, this incremental genocide, slow motion genocide, um, for the la for the last thirteen for the last thirteen years, and the absolute and, and, the, and the international community has just paying us lip service, empty rhetoric, and this is why it is it is up to people like the Freedom Flotilla um, and activists to come and break this deadly siege. I mean, we have been you know we have been marching. Uh, and you know about the, the, the Great March of Return, uh, where more than three, 330 people have been killed for just protesting this inhumane siege and for demanding Israel to comply with international law and implement United Nations Resolution 194. I want to return to the, to the village of, of Zarnuga. Yes, my people, my, my, my parents died in 2005, but yes, it is my right to return, uh, to return to that village. And this is why I think this initiative, uh, the, the Freedom Flotilla and all other initiatives which aim to break this, uh, this medieval siege uh, are extremely important now. Unfortunately, and this is the feeling that we have on the ground here in Gaza, is that Israel has in cahoot with the United States of America and with the reactionary Arab regime has managed to normalize this um, uh, slow motion genocide taking place right now in Gaza. And, and it is sad. It's very, very sad um, that the same international community which took I mean, it took the same international community more than 30 years to heed the call made by the oppressed blacks of South Africa and then impose sanctions um, against the apartheid system. Now, we don't, want to, we don't want that to happen. We issued our call for BDS, boycott divestment sanctions, back in 2005, and it was given a boost Thanks, of course, to the blood of the children of Gaza in 2009, 2012, 2014, and 2017, 18, 19, um, when um, hundreds of people were killed by snipers, Israeli snipers, war criminals targeting civilians who marched demanding the implementation of international law. And this is why. We have lost hope when it comes to, of, to the official international community. We have lost hope. And we only bank on international civil society, on people of conscience, uh, such as yourselves, activists of the Freedom Flotilla, to take those bold steps and force Israel, one, to end its war crimes 
that it has been committing against the people of Gaza by ending immediately, immediately this deadly siege, by then that comes within the context of Israel's occupation of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank that has been taking place since uh, 1967 and which has been considered the longest military occupation in the 20th and, of course, the 21st century. And um, the implementation, of course, we want Israel to implement United Nations Resolution 194 calling for the return of Palestinian refugees and end Israel's apartheid laws. We want equality. Edward Said said it, equality or nothing. Black South Africans died for equality. Steve Biko died for equality. Nelson Mandela spent more than 27 years on, on, on Robben Island uh, demanding equality for all residents of South Africa. Uh, Martin Luther King demanded equality. Uh, African Americans in the American South demanded equality. Mahatma Gandhi demanded freedom. And these are basic, basic human rights basic human rights, fundamental human rights. And I don't think it's too, it's not, I don't think it's too much for us to demand our basic human rights. So we would like to say thank you to the, um, to the Freedom Flotilla, Flotilla activists, to all those BDS activists, to all conscientious people out there demanding the implementation of international law and basic human rights for the Palestinian people. Thank you so much.